anyways hi hi welcome to my channel uh this video is about my mexican vacation from hell because it really was um i just don't want to offend anyone because i'm calling it a mexican vacation from hell i went to mexico and it was hell um but I'm Mexican, so I don't want people to think like, oh, and she's just like a racist, and that's why she didn't like it. Like, no. Like, we, it was like a vacation, but I went with my dad because he needed to go visit family. He needed to, he wanted to go visit family. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I don't know how to do this. I've never made a story time video before. Anyways, let's just start off by the fact that I did not want to go to Mexico. And it was around May this year, 2019, and my dad's like, oh, there's another trip to Mexico coming up like what's your schedule gonna look like so you can ask for the days off and I'll know which kind of which days to go and I was like I'm not going to Mexico again and it's not like I actually had a lot of fun the first time I went I actually ended up enjoying it a lot but this time I don't know like I just had a feeling like sometimes I feel like I'm psychic I don't believe in psychics I'm a very cynical person I don't believe in anything but let me tell you if I believed in psychics I would be a psychic and I just like there was literally no reason for me not to want to go to Mexico. Like I had a great experience last time. Like just like I had this feeling like I'm like don't like this feeling in my head and my heart that was like don't go to Mexico, don't go to Mexico, don't go to Mexico, it's gonna suck. And I told my dad that and he's like, Well, I'm gonna go no matter what, like make me me feel guilty and like my dad doesn't like to fly. He wants to drive because he likes taking stuff to his family and it's like a sixteen hour drive to get there so like driving there was okay it wasn't bad i mean it, it still sucks you know but everything was fine except it wasn't because i was just around adults and little kids and i i got to my grandma's house it was fine i i love my grandma she feeds me all the time everything's good i even like i thought i was ready for this i was like okay i know mexico now i know how things work there it'll be fun like I downloaded stuff on my computer, like I downloaded a whole season of the challenge, I downloaded stuff on Netflix, I did everything except sometimes I just can't prepare. So let me just tell you, so for like five out of the, I don't know, like seven days we spent there, I was literally just in my grandma's house reading, watching the challenge and then re-watching it because I finished watching it because they don't have Wi-Fi there. So And my phone gets terrible reception, by the way, also over there because it's like in the middle of nowhere and I'm just surrounded there with adults I'm not doing anything and my dad like dad love you but he's kind of mean when he's in Mexico like because he's around his whole family so that's all he cares about and I was literally stuck in a house with nothing to do for most of the day every day where it's also hot like it's not as hot as other times but it's pretty hot but let me tell you something about Mexican bathrooms, okay, or Mexican public restrooms is first of all, sometimes you have to just pay to well most of the time You have to pay to use it. So it's like a couple cents, but still Okay, and I it's probably like a penny here like <laughs> Anyways, so you have to pay which You're gonna sit there <laughs> you look like a giant dog so, Other than paying there's also they the public restrooms don't have any toilet paper so you have to bring your own toilet paper and that's what we did when we were like driving we have bring like two rolls of toilet paper to use but obviously you're not going to carry around a toilet paper with you everywhere you go in mexico so i was convinced i got my period because i knew i was going to get it while i was in <coughs> done anyways i knew i was going to get it while i was in mexico <coughs> and i'm sorry if this is tmi but this is part of the story and I was really worried about that because, like, girls, you know, periods kind of take up a lot of toilet paper. There's a, I mean, you just really want to be in a place where there's toilet paper just in case for anything. Luckily, I didn't get my period. And then let me tell you this part, too. So I take some medication, some antidepressants and some anxiety medication, whatever. And I took, I took them with me in my bag. And when I miss, like... I can go a day without taking it and I'll feel fine. When I miss two days, like I start getting really dizzy and so I couldn't take them. Want to know why? Because for some reason, these child-proof uh, containers have a child-proof cap opened. 
both of them opened in my backpack and guess what these pills look exactly the same and I can't tell the difference so I had to just be taking one pill a day so there was either one pill that I well there was one pill that I was missing every day but I didn't know which one it was and obviously I couldn't take two because what if I took two of the same one I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen if I do that so I was dizzy like most of the time because that happened on the second day when I looked in my bag and both somehow both pill bottles with childproof caps opened and spilled inside my backpack and the pills looked exactly the same. So that was fun. I was dizzy all the time. Yeah. Anyways, let's fast forward to when we're leaving because I think that's when shit really hit the fan. This, everything that I recorded before is like minor details. Let's fast forward to leave in Mexico. So it was my last day in Mexico. I was so excited. I literally made a countdown because I was just having a bad time. It's the last day. My countdown is finally counting down to when I'm leaving and I pack everything. Fast forward to three in the morning. That's when I'm leaving. So my dad's coming to pick me up and I'm just waiting for him. I'm on my phone and I take a Snapchat, like a selfie of me. And it's like me looking all happy and I caption it, just waiting for my dad to pick me up so we can go home. Except when I'm about to post it, I think, should I post this? I'm like, if something happens on the way, I'm going to look so stupid. I don't want to jinx it. Maybe I shouldn't post this. Like, I'm like, uh, I'm so happy. Like, no one has to know how happy I'm to leave. Like, I just kept thinking, I was like, if something happens, I'm just going to look so stupid. So maybe I shouldn't post this, but I posted it. And I should have, I mean, I don't think me posting it had anything to do with it. But see, like, I just had this premonition. Like, I knew something was going to happen. Um... But finally we leave, we say goodbye to everyone. Last time, the first time I went to Mexico, saying goodbye to everyone was so hard. I got back to my grandma's house where I'm, I was staying and where I stay and just cried so much and was like, oh, I love everyone here and I'm gonna miss Mexico. This time I was like, see ya later alligator. I don't wanna be here anymore. And we're finally on our way. And last time my dad said, he, he's like, you slept the whole ride, like try to stay awake for me a little bit, at least until the sun comes up so I don't fall asleep. So I'm doing that for him. He's drinking Monster and I'm eating a shit ton of Hot Cheetos. Anyone who knows, I love Hot Cheetos. Like my fingers are like permanently stained red from all the Hot Cheetos that I eat. There's literally a bag of Hot Cheetos right behind my phone, right there on my couch. Anyways, um, I'm eating Hot Cheetos, drinking water, doing my thing. Also, I forgot my little pillow. I had a little travel pillow and I forgot it at my grandma's house. Just more bad things, right? Um, everything's good. And let me just tell you, there's this part of the road that my dad really just hated. It's um, Cause Mexico, man, I don't know what the fuck they're doing there, but last year, last July when we went, there was this, like a five mile stretch of road that they're working on that's basically just it's like supposed to be the highway like international interstate like mexico highway but it's literally just a really poorly maintained dirt road because on the side they're working on doing the real thing but i don't know i guess they've been working on it for three years now four because this year is still like that and it just gets even worse because last year wasn't bad this year you really you have to go like 25 miles per hour that whole stretch because there's rocks there's so much stuff and everything so and my dad the whole time we were in Mexico and people would be like oh how was the trip how was the drive he'd be like it was fine but then he'd bring up that road again he's like oh with that road I hate that road like why are they how what are they doing how long does it take to fix that road it's been like this for years now and stuff and then like we finally got to the dirt patch and my dad was like oh here we go again and I was like man I'm gonna take a nap like I'm like I'm done with these hot cheetos I'm gonna take a nap and then my dad was in the middle of a sentence and I literally, I can't remember. I don't know what the fuck, but I can't remember. I just know there was, it's nothing bad. We, nobody was hurt. But like there was a, a bus coming, like a passenger bus that was huge, like a tour bus, but not a tour bus. It's just full of passengers um, coming and right in the middle of the fucking road in the road because not even a road. There's just like a giant pile of dirt with a giant fucking rock on top of it. And my dad really can't go this way because there's just more fucking dirt and rocks over here. And then there's a giant fucking tour bus over here. So like we just didn't see it coming. We were distracted, but also like out of fucking nowhere that comes like at least have a sign, right? But they don't. And so 
my dad has basically no choice but to no choice but to go over it and i don't really know i was just we were just talking all of a sudden the car starts going like this like i thought we we're gonna flip this way because it goes like this everything moves we had the fucking we were going in an explorer in a ford explorer and it was just the back was just filled with like 10 fucking blocks of cheese um like 10 fucking pounds of beans like my suitcase his suitcase all kinds of random shit there like it was all filled you couldn't even see like if my dad really wanted to like to go look through his the rear view mirror he couldn't and everything's just shaking i think one of the suitcases almost comes to the front seat and then we like stop and suddenly everything's okay we're like oh everything's fine we didn't crash we didn't hit the tour bus tour bus everything's good and my dad's like okay like you could tell he was scared he's like okay everything's good everything's good so we drive for like maybe like 30 seconds and that suitcase is like about to come um to the front so my dad's like let me pull over and fix it and just i'll check also the hood just to make sure everything's okay and i was like okay um so he fixes it and he goes and i'm just like please lord please let this be okay and by the way it's probably like four o'clock in the morning so it's still dark as fuck outside and like i just really i'm like please let it be okay we're probably like an hour or two hours out of where we were visiting where we're staying where our family is and he comes back and i'm like everything's fine and he's like no he's like i don't think it's fine but let's just keep going for a little bit we drive for like two minutes and he's like we get a little notification on the dashboard like oh your battery is running low it's gonna die and then where he's like we're just gonna keep driving for like a little bit more probably 30 more seconds and he's like oh my god the lights are dimming so we have to pull over oh my god i'm gonna cry just think about it right now i know as long as it doesn't sound bad but like imagine just being like miserable for like a whole fucking week and being so excited finally going home where there's ac where your friends your family your dog like things you actually enjoy doing are there like i like i was just literally stuck in my grandma's house all the time like i wasn't doing anything that i wanted to do while i was in mexico like it was just a bad time so i was ready to go back home and then my dad tells me yeah we can't stay here also we're in the middle of fucking nowhere in mexico like literally we're right in the middle where there is so now we're this way to get to the nearest city and then so now we're that way to get to the nearest city or I think it's an hour and a half, but the city that was an hour and a half was a bigger city that would probably have the parts that we needed because my dad looks and I guess some band, I don't know what the fuck kind of band, and then the radiator are both broken. So we can't drive like that. And like at this point, I literally just froze. Like I didn't know what to do. Like my dad's like, okay, so what do we do? Who do we call? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like if we were in America, I'd be like, okay, let's do this. We'll call roadside assistance for our insurance, or we'll call AAA, we'll call a tow truck. We can just look it up online. In fucking Mexico, you can't do that. Like, I'm sure, like, they have things, but, like, I don't, I didn't grow up in Mexico. I don't know anything about Mexico. Like, who the hell are we really going to call? Do they, does Mexico have AAA? Do they, does Progressive do roadside assistance there? I don't think so. Like, a tow truck? Like, I'm going to really go up and, like, tow trucks in middle of nowhere Mexico. No, I looked it up. I tried, but obviously nothing's gonna pop up because the nearest cities are like with 3,000 residents. So they're not gonna have a fucking website for their tow truck company, right? Um, yeah, that was. And also, like I said, we're in literally the middle of nowhere, Mexico, in the desert, dark at night. And I literally thought we were gonna die. I thought, like, I don't want this to sound like. I don't want people to think that I think all Mexico is is like narcos and drug cartels and all this shit. Like, I'm Mexican. I know there's so much more to Mexico than that. But like, even my dad, who is Mexican too, who grew up, born, raised in Mexico, was scared of that. My mom here, because she didn't come with us in the United States, who is Mexican. My sister, who is Mexican, born in Mexico, were scared. They're like, oh my god. Like, they were scared we we're gonna get kidnapped too. Like, they're gonna be like. Driving by, they're gonna see we have a nice vehicle with United States plates, they're gonna fucking take us. And yeah, that was scary. Uh, my dad calls his family. His family's like, we'll try to look up. Like, they're like, we're gonna call the tow truck people from our city, see if they know any tow truck people from different cities. We're like calling everyone that like, 
any tow truck company that we could find and we called one tow truck company in the nearest city which was Barral, Chihuahua you can look that up it's so hot in here sorry and we call him and my dad's like hi we need a tow truck but the thing is it's like an hour and a half away and the guy's like yeah I'm not gonna go pick you guys up because first of all you could just be joking and be like I need you guys to come pick me up like an hour and a half away this this and that you know and like there's no one there which I understand and my dad was like please just like do you have a number that we could call for this for like and the guy's like I'm sorry I can't help you but I'm not gonna go pick you guys up so yeah and we just spent like another hour there thinking of what we could do and the sun's finally starting to come up except that the sun's starting to come up and we can't turn the truck on because or the explorer on because it's gonna overheat and so now we're just basically it's gonna be stuck in a hot car at this point also um the hot cheetos aren't hitting me very well i think it's just nerves too obviously like i think i'm gonna fucking die in the desert in mexico and i also just want to be home and stuff but like my stomach is grumbling and my dad even hears it and i was like I just, I need to burp, I didn't need to burp, I needed to shit, but I didn't say that because I was embarrassed. Uh, my dad gives me some Alka-Seltzer and I fall asleep in like a 90 degree car and turns out my, so we try, blah, blah. anyways, we're trying to get people to come. Finally, our last straw is my dad has to call 911, the Mexico 911, which is, I think it is 911 now. It used to be a different number, but I think it now is 911 and my dad has to tell them like, hi, we're stuck here in the middle of nowhere and no one wants to come pick us up so then 911 has to call the tow truck guy that we had already called before to tell him to come pick us up to like basically make him pick us up and then the tow truck guy calls us and he's like I'm still not gonna pick you guys up I don't care what 911 fucking says until I don't know how it came up that we were from the United States and he's like oh you're from the United States okay I'll come pick you guys up He's like, but don't tell anyone. Like, it was really sketchy, by the way. He's like, but don't call anyone anymore. Don't tell anyone that I'm doing this and I don't want you to call anyone or anymore. Stop calling the police and everything. And then I was kind of a little bit like sketched out, but my dad's like, that's fine. Just come pick us up. He's like, okay, it's gonna be like an hour and a half. Can you wait there? Obviously we had no fucking choice but to wait there. And I guess he just he found out that we were from the United States and he thought we had money like he's like oh these guys are rich okay I'll go pick them up so we wait there for another hour and a half and my stomach is getting really bad like it's just like you would think I'm boiling something in my fucking stomach and the tow truck gets there and it sucks because also it's a hundred degrees outside and not only do no houses or buildings in Mexico have AC which I'm sure like when I was in the city city stuff had AC not houses, but like stores and stuff. But then once you get to like the outskirts, nothing has AC. Okay, but neither do cars or like any of the cars that I've been in. So we were in a tow truck that was just basically, just had a front seat. So just the driver in the middle and then the side. But I made my dad go in the middle because he was already feeling very guilty. I fell asleep for like a third of the way there, but I wake up because I'm like, I'm about to puke. Like I'm literally, I think I'm gonna just throw up everything. I don't though, and we make it to the mechanic's house. And so we make it to the mechanic's house. And by the way, this time I'm wearing a long Jimi Hendrix shirt, which I fucking love and I had to throw away. Why, you'll find out later. And black leggings like this, socks, and these shoes, these ones. And so I'm basically in all black, a black red socks hat or navy blue, but it's fucking black and the mechanic shop is just all outside there's nowhere to sit there's no shade so the sun is just fucking blurring down on me and i can't be in the car because i think that that probably just be worse we finally get there and they're looking up and they're they're looking at the car and they're like yeah we need to get you a radiator and a new band they're like let's call autozone they call autozone and they're like oh they do have this band and they're like the radiator is gonna take like four days to get here and i'm just like I cannot be in Mexico for more f days. I can't do this for fucking days more in Mexico. I will literally go insane. And once they say that, like I'm like tearing up and my dad's like, no, it's okay. It's okay. Well, it, it's going to be okay. And, and then he convinces the mechanics. He's like, can you just drive us around to all the radiator shops here? We're we to go, we're going to go to the, what's it called? The Ford dealership, the, 
where else are we going? The Ford dealership that they have there, like all the other like car shops, car parts shops that they have there and the mechanics like yeah if you give us 10 pistols for gas so my dad has to pay them we go in there we also have to go to the bank because my dad has to pay the tow truck guy which again the tow truck guy once my dad pays him is like you can't tell anyone i did this yeah i swear if you tell anyone you just can't please this i did this a favor for you and i'm just like what the fuck like I don't understand why he didn't want other people to know but he's like again i'm telling you you can't tell anyone that i did this I don't know man but yeah so finally we're in the mechanics car and it's I'm gonna be honest it's a shitty car again no AC and we're driving around and it's so hot and I'm just popping Tums because at this point I feel so sick and I'm like I don't have anything else like what the fuck else do I have so I'm literally just popping Tums anything that will make me feel better and uh, we finally we go around the town the city to the different mechanical shops whatever and my I just remember my mom calling me and I like thought I was gonna pass out like my dad says that all he remembers is me just like leaning on him and like falling asleep but I don't remember that and he said that he would feel so that he would feel so sorry for me every time I would do that because I just looked so sick and like I just remember my mom calling me and I'm like mom I'm gonna have to call you back later because I don't know what the fuck's going on and I, at this point I thought I was having a panic attack because that's what happens like and the next thing I know I'm throwing the fuck up inside everywhere inside the mechanics car yep everywhere and I'm looking for like do they have any bags they have one tiny little styrofoam cup with coke in it in the cup holder and i'm trying to like reach over the window and throw up and my dad's like what's going on what's going on and i can't tell him that i'm puking my fucking guts out and finally we come to a stop so i'm opening the door and throwing up and guess what my throw up sorry the door is over here so that's what i'm saying I'm like well throwing up anyways uh my throw up is all red because all of it i had to eat that day were those hot cheetos that i was really enjoying on my happy way home from Mexico where I thought everything was fine before my life had turned upside down. But it's all red and it's all over me. It's all over my shirt. I, my dad finally gives me that tiny little styrofoam cup to throw up in, which by that time I already puked all my guts out. I thought, but no, then I threw up again at another stoplight and then I almost fell out of that car because they kept driving and I was still throwing my guts out. Then, then, this is gonna be TMI, but I shit my pants too. I shit my fucking pants. I, every single time I would go, Bleh! it came out of both ends. I'm no, I'm, I'm so attractive right now and I'm sure I was so attractive then, but that's the truth. That's what fucking happened. I <laughs> shit my pants and it happened like so many times. Like I was just done. I thought I had thrown up all the hot Cheetos possible and shit all the shit out possible. Mm -mm. It just kept coming. And when I'm saying every time I'd go, Bleh! It would come out of my butt. It would. Sorry. I was, I literally think I had heat stroke. I don't know what the fuck, but I'm, so after I finally finished throwing up, I just fucking cry. I just break down. There was a little old man, which is the dad, the mechanic's dad, was in the front seat and he was like, ay, la niña, pobrecita, está mala. Which he's like, oh, the poor little girl is sick, which I probably did look like a little girl because I was wearing makeup because my, uh, my parents tell me, don't look at all attractive don't wear any revealing clothes because you don't want to get kidnapped in mexico so if i have any wrong ideas about mexico it's it's my parents who are telling me that okay but i don't know anyways which is why i ended up wearing all black and why i probably got like heat stroke but whatever so i'm just crying and my dad's like it's okay it's okay he'll go to the bathroom and get cleaned up and i was like no dad it's not all he's like yeah yeah just get me we'll just get you a new shirt and i was like dad i pooped too and he's like, oh, you did? I was like, yes, dad, I shit my pants too. So I, my dad has to go to the Explorer, get just random clothes, add, and then get me new underwear too, out of my bag. And I have to go back upstairs to the, to the mechanic's house because his shop was at his house and change. And I had to throw away my favorite Jimi Hendrix shirt, my favorite leggings and my favorite well it was my favorite pair of underwear it was pretty good pretty perfectly fine pair of underwear and i had to throw it all out and now it, they're just sitting at a random landfill in mexico 
with shit and red throw up on because the throw up was red it stained my skin red because i threw up all over my hand i when like then i don't know when i looked in the mirror at the bathroom i had it on my face i had it up here i don't know what the fuck happened but finally get back um we i changed and then my dad's like he's like okay we're not gonna find the radiator today just take us to a hotel we need to go to a hotel like i need to get her to this hotel because like so we need to get her to a hotel because she's fucking dying and i just remember still in the back seat fucking dying like i still thought i was gonna throw up like i just wanted to pass out it was so fucking hot and the the mechanics are asking my dad they're like do you have any preferences for like what kind of hotel and he's like my dad's like no just one that's in a nice area that's that's not too crappy that's pretty nice and i'm just like with wi-fi like I'm dying, I'm like, and my dad's like, what? And I'm like, Wi-Fi, I just want Wi-Fi. And he, my dad's like, and it has internet. So they take us to one, it's pretty nice. We check in and I literally like, I don't say anything, we walk in and I just plop on the bed and I just pretty much just stay on that bed until we fall asleep, until I fall asleep. And then the next day, which by the way, I also had no pajamas. Oh, let me tell you this part. So since we were, cause I was fucking throwing my guts out and shitting my guts out. Uh, we just went straight to the hotel we left our suitcases and everything in there like I think the only thing I had was my computer and my backpack that I had on me but everything else I didn't and so I just had to sleep in whatever clothes I changed into which weren't pajama clothes or anything and I had to sleep in that which is very uncomfortable and the next day I wake up and I feel wet and I thought Oh, I, I shit my pants again or I pee my pants, which honestly at this point peeing my pants is actually the better option and way less embarrassing than shitting my pants again. But no, I wake up and remember that period I was supposed to get? I got it. And not only did I get my period, I got my period. Like it I feel like I got two periods at the same time because it was everywhere. And guess who didn't have any tampons with her? or extra clothes, or extra underwear, because they were all in the suitcase in the Explorer that was at the mechanics shop, me. And also I was like, and by, by the way, my dad wasn't there at that point, he already left to go try to find the parts and everything. Um, so that was uh, that was fun. And so I'm like, I would probably have to told my dad, like, dad, I need you to go get me clothes because I got my period. But I had to just wait there for probably like two hours. Luckily, I didn't have to tell him that I had my period because uh, he, the, he, he came back, he brought the suitcase, and I was like, uh oh, dad, why do you have the suitcase? And he's like, yeah, the radiator is not coming back till tomorrow. So, guess who was gonna spend another whole extra fucking day in Mexico? I was. After I shit my pants, threw up, and then perioded everywhere like a lot like i was a little bit worried i was like is this normal should i be bleeding this much um but at least i had my clothes back and tampons but i had to go like a good two three hours just waiting for my dad to come back and just sitting in bloody underwear and pants yeah lovely time anyways finally the next day comes and we finally get to go home sorry i got a phone call this is i feel like i'm in a completely different position now but anyways i forgot what part of the story i was in but it was after i had my period the next day the car's finally fucking fixed except we don't have ac so for the next fucking let's i don't know we were probably like 12 hours away at that point we had to just drive with the windows down you couldn't hear anything and but we were driving and i didn't care i could have it could have been 125 fucking thousand degrees in that car and i would have driven in it ridden in it i don't care but luckily i felt fine the next day i woke up and i i didn't eat anything the next day after i i sh shit and threw up but then um the next day which was the day we finally left i was fine that day everything was good we and then we got to the border and they made us take out every single thing we had in that car and that car was like fucking packed we had to take out our 10 cheeses our 5,000 loaves of bread our 10 pounds of beans everything that we had in there we had to take it down and then put it back and then they also told me I couldn't be on my phone which also I was kind of mad I'm like it that took like 30 minutes what am I supposed to do like for 30 minutes 
there was nothing interesting. I, I couldn't be on my, like, read some books or do anything because those were also being inspected. But, yeah, we finally got through there. And, oh, my God, I was so happy. I, like, I, like, fuck Donald Trump, honestly. Fuck this country that, like, favors the Second Amendment over actual human fucking lives, you know? Like, fuck this racist-ass country. But I fucking love you, America. Land of the free, home of the fucking brave. Stupid people also. But, oh, my God. God bless America, man. I literally, like... We are, we have it so good. We also have, like, just, first of all, fucking roads that work. Also, if you travel in the United States, you don't have to worry about getting kidnapped, for the most part, you know, like. Oh, also, by the way, so then, in, like, another part, they, because Mexico, I don't know, they have different, they have checkpoints at just different parts, so, we we got they had to go through like a checkpoint where like the police just like where are you going and they have these fucking like giant guns i don't know anything about guns but it's those long ones rifles ar-15s i don't know what the fuck they are but we have they had that and they were just like where are you going where are you headed where are you from this and that and basically my dad had to pay the police officer to let us go the police officer literally was like yeah so uh hopefully you're gonna give me money so you can go so then we had to pay the police officer with like my dad's last pesos that he had. So I don't, yeah. And it was just like dinner for his friends. He's like, yeah, I want to take these guys out to dinner. So every country has their own problems. Fuck Donald Trump, but God bless America. And that was my Mexican vacation from hell. Obvi I mean, I was gonna say obviously this isn't like Mexico's fault. Like. Mexico, get your roads together at least, and also get parts for car parts. And also stop making public restrooms like they're public. And at least put toilet paper in the restrooms and invest in some ACs and just get those roads fixed. Anyways, thanks for watching. I don't know, I've been doing this a lot, what the fuck? Um, thanks for watching, subscribe, like, because um, my next story time might be the time I got drunk and had to go to the hospital. I got really drunk, got kicked out of the club and had to go to the hospital. So, I'm sorry, Mom. I'm just gonna hate this video. I got the magic in me.